We caught up with singer-songwriter, indie artist, Korean-American Priscilla Ahn, who finds herself not only dealing with a pandemic, a songwriting career, but also motherhood. It's actually, it's been, I feel very fortunate to be able to say that it's been a very nice time in the way that, you know, my husband suddenly didn't have work or pressure of work. Um, and we've, first of all, as a family, we've just been able to be together. Our, our kids are five and two and, oh. and just being able to see them every single day and be together. It, it was just a very nice time we were thankful for, but, um, but also it's funny, um, when COVID, you know, hit the world and, and then following that was Black Lives Matter um i was going through a little bit of some deep introspective thinking especially when COVID hit where i was just like what is my life for like what is this about what am i supposed to be doing because i think i kind of once i became a mom five years ago i kind of shut down the music part of myself i made a children's album when i was pregnant and then that was kind of it and i really considered maybe like changing careers or just focusing on being a mom i really wanted to like take on that role and focus on that which i did and then when i was pregnant with my second son something triggered and i was like i think i just wanted like a piece of my old identity back <laughs> <laughs> so i was like i think i want to do try music again but coming back into it, you know, I didn't feel very relevant anymore. A lot of things had changed in the past few years. And so I just was struggling to understand what my place and my purpose was. And I was like, why would people even care or want to hear my music anymore? You know, I've been around for a good bit and now I'm coming back. What will bring people back? And it's funny, so like I am not very technologically savvy. And so even with Instagram, I still, I never dove deep into it. I didn't realize that you can get direct messages from people. <laughs> it was like this weird circuitous route where I have to like accept the message and then I can see it and I don't know. Anyway, I, I just figured it out one day because you know, it was COVID, there's nothing to do. And I think I was looking for a little bit of outside connection and I suddenly saw, you know, hundreds and hundreds of messages from fans in the past years telling me how my music had helped them through maybe a difficult time in their life. And, I, and it was like a, a running theme. And people had told me that in the past, I'd heard some of those stories. And for whatever reason, I was not very kind to myself and I didn't really, I didn't really accept it as real. And I, cause I just didn't want to give myself or my music that credit. And I was just always very like insecure and down on myself. <laughs> but yeah, so seeing those messages um, and really taking them in and maybe seeing them all back to back like that too, it just really hit me that like, oh my gosh, like my music really helps people. And I've always wanted to do something that helped people. Cause when I was thinking about a career change, I was like, maybe I'll be a therapist or something like could work with children. And, and uh, now I'm realizing that my music kind of plays that role in a way for people. And yeah, and so it's actually, this time has really re-inspired me. And I think made my purpose musically and in my life um, just more clear. And so I have like a real goal. And when I start to doubt myself again, I can I can root myself in this new discovery, which has been really nice. And so this new single, how did that come about? So <clears throat> there's two new singles out now. Okay. So one, the first one is called You Make the World a Better Place. This was a cup. This I covered this song, 
It's written by a guy named Benji Hughes, and I've covered some of his songs in the past. He's one of my favorite singer-songwriters, and this song in particular, whenever it came on my iPod or phone or whatever, um, it just filled me with such a warm, fuzzy, positive feeling. You know, the chorus is, you make the world a better place, you know? And it's sung in this beautiful melody that just like reminded me of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, this we is- We love amazing. Mr. Rogers. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and yeah, it just felt like a message that I just felt people needed to, felt like an, an affirmation that we all need to remember. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of the, the basis of that song. I really wanted to put that vibe, that energy out there. The, the second single, which was just released, is called Waiting. It's a song I wrote with a guy named Dan Wilson, who was the singer from the band Semisonic. And we wrote this 10 years ago and it it started out as like you know i'd been touring a lot he used to tour all the time so it's kind of like a song of of waiting to to be back with your loved one again um and it's interesting because you know we were i was mixing this album when COVID hit and listening back to the songs and even playing the songs for some friends they were like whoa this song waiting is like did you write this about this time? And I was, you know, and I was like, no, but it's very interesting how the words can really relate, you know, waiting to be reconnected with your loved ones, which I, you know, all of us are having to do right now. It's somewhat psychic, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> this was planned. No. <laughs> I, uh, I look at musicians during this time of COVID and their inability to tour is so it sounds like for you because your kids are so small it's been a blessing for you um, but how are you able to write when you have kids to take care of <laughs> at the same time I, I heard that's the big problem with mothers you, right now the kids are home they can't go to school and they still have you know to especially young ones yeah um, well yeah. So as far as like the touring part, I kind of, I felt like I kind of made up for it a little bit because I discovered the Instagram live function. Mm. So this past summer, every Wednesday, um, I would do like a kid's show of kid-friendly songs around 10 a.m. And I looked forward to it so much. And my husband would, you know, watch our kids for those 30 minutes and and yeah and it just brought me so much joy to bring this to other moms who i know were struggling and just like pulling their hair out of like what am i gonna do how am i gonna fill up the day because i know that feeling <laughs> 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 so like people would take pictures of their kids watching the show and it just that it was very uplifting for me. <laughs> I found a lot of uplifting things from this pandemic for myself personally. Um, but as far as writing mm -hmm. as a mom, it is really hard. Um, you know, I discovered when my second was just a like tiny baby and just starting to crawl around, you know, there would be some nights where he wouldn't fall asleep that easily. And instead of struggling and maybe rocking him for an hour or so, they, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to let you kind of crawl around me here on the floor. And I sat there with him and he was so happy to just be hanging out. And I just picked up this little guitar I had and I started writing a song and, and then I, needed to like finish the song at one point and I took him on a walk carrying him in a carrier and I started thinking about the song and the rest of the melody like came to be on my walk and so for me it was a real discovery of like how to write in a different way when other stuff is going on um it's a little bit harder now that they're both running around they're both talking and being like mommy 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 <laughs> It's always so, mommy. Yes. Yeah. It's always mommy. <laughs> so I literally, I just have to wait till they go to bed and I hope that I have enough energy to sit down and, you know, write something and, um, 
yeah, I don't know why, but I'm feeling more creative these days, which has been nice. And so just figuring it out, it's, it's exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> so now that the pandemic is, we're seeing some glimmers of hope on the horizon that it, it may be over sooner than we think, or at least we hope, we pray, maybe next year. I don't know, but yeah. um, are, do you have any plans going forward? Yes. Um, let's see. What are my plans? Well, this, so the EP is going to be released at the end of this month, um, but it's not being released in Japan yet until the summer because there's a record label there putting it out. And their whole thing was they really want me to come over and tour, mm. which, well, I mean, part of my motivation for writing this EP was so that I could go back to Asia and tour again because <laughs> I really miss it and I miss my friends over there. And it was, you know, it was always just a great way to get to travel and bring my family along. <laughs> but um, yeah, so yeah, I, I'll be really excited when it's safe to travel and have, you know, physical concerts again to do that. Um, so you so do plan I'll, on continuing to, to tour a bit? A little bit. You know, touring in Asia is a lot different from touring in the U.S. Touring in the U.S. is pretty grueling um, for, you know, an indie artist like myself. Um, and so I don't know if I will ever do a full-on tour like that again, just because the U.S. is so huge, too. So it would usually be a longer tour. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to be separated from my family for that long um, or drag them along. <laughs> for it. But, in, but in Asia, like, you know, touring in China, Japan, Korea, um, Taiwan, it's, it's a, for whatever reason, it's actually easier. So interesting. And, yeah. And I, and I love being able to show them that culture as well, since it is a part of them, you know, even though they really don't look it. <laughs> <laughs> that is singer-songwriter Priscilla Ahn. We also had a brief discussion about her identity as being half Asian and half American. And she says in order to resolve the conflict between being a Korean and an American, she's decided to become a member of the international community, a global citizen, if you may. For AZAM News, I'm Mimi Chen.